Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make a smart recording or a video on your smart notebook. So this version is a little bit older because I have it on my home laptop, but the version that we have in school might be, um, it's obviously a little bit more updated, so it might be a little bit different. So usually the first thing you're going to have to do is to put the smart recorder in your toolbar. So you're going to go up to view and you're going to go down to customize toolbar. When you have this and you click on that, it's going to show you this screen here. And I think in the one in school, you're going to have to scroll down to the bottom until you see smart recorder. I have mine up top here. The icon is a little bit different um, on the one at school, like I said, just because it's updated. So what you would do is you're going to click on this and you're going to drag it to your toolbar and you can put it anywhere so I could move it over here if I wanted I could move it over here wherever you want it so I'm gonna put it over here for right now and then when you're done you're just gonna click done to get out of that or close whatever it says on the updated version and then here is your smart recorder so it's supposed to save it so that it's always on your toolbar but worst case scenario you'll just have to redo that every time you go to make a video so now what I would do is I would I would create a smart board um, for whatever lesson or video you want to record. So usually what I do is I pre-make it ahead of time. So I'm going to open one up that I already have. Okay. So here's one that I made on finding the missing terms in an arithmetic sequence. And then if I scroll through, you can see there's just the examples that I'm going to do in the video. So once you have your smart board made, you're just going to click the smart recorder. And then it brings up this menu. And you can move this menu around wherever you want it. And there are three buttons on the menu. Record, obviously records. Pause, so you can pause at any time during the video to either stop and, you know, take a breath or get something to drink or if somebody interrupts you, whatever you want, and then you just hit record again. And then the stop button stops completely and it saves the video for you. So I use headphones that we have that plug into the smart board or that, that plug into the computer. Um, we have ones that have a USB adapter. Um, they're all different kinds, obviously. And then once you plug them in, it has a microphone attached to it. So I would just hit record. And then what it does is it records anything on the screen that you write. So if I'm writing or it'll record if I put a shape in, it records the whole screen as I flip from page to page and it also records whatever you talk into them or speak into the microphone so I can pause it and then I can take a breath and then I can hit record and it picks back up right where I was and then at the end when I'm ready I hit stop and it prompts me to save it so you can save it wherever you want you can save it in your desktop um, in your documents, in your T drive. Um, just be aware that if you're saving it in your T drive, there is not a lot of space. So what we usually do um, is we'll save it to a USB um, or save it to your T drive and then upload it and then delete it, whatever you want. So I'm going to save this just to my desktop for right now so you can see. And it takes a little bit of time. Obviously, the longer the video, the longer it takes to upload. And then it'll bring you to these two options. So you can play the recording right away and hit OK, or you can just hit OK and it'll save it. So I like to hit play recording because I like to be able to just check to make sure that it worked. Um, a helpful hint is that I always do a test run before, like a five second or 10 second test run before I do my actual video um, to make sure that it's working so that I don't go through like a whole 15 minute video and then realize it didn't work in the end and it was a waste of my time. So this will come up and it'll open up in a Windows media file. 
so now you can hear it and you can see it so I can X out of that and that's about it so usually what I do is I then convert it or upload it rather to YouTube so I'm going to show you how I do that also. So for YouTube, I have my own YouTube channel and all you really need for that is a Gmail account. So I created, I have a personal Gmail account, but I created one that is Mrs. Barbino at gmail.com. So this way, um, it doesn't have any of my personal stuff on it. It's like my school one that I use pretty much just for YouTube. So when you go to YouTube, um, I'm signed in over here already as you can see um, or you need to create an account whichever you want to do so then once you're signed in you have your own channel so on the left hand side there's this menu over here and I can click on my channel and you can see these are all the videos that I have uploaded let me X out of this so it's out of our way so these are all the videos that I have uploaded um, it can be viewed by the public obviously so if somebody is googling you know how to do function notation they can see my videos but I post individual links for my students I um, keep a link posted to my overall channel on my Edmodo page and then when particular um, videos pertain to a specific topic I'll drop them a direct link to that specific video as opposed to the entire page so I also have playlists that I created for them with different units so if they click on this playlist it has all of the videos on this particular unit so as you can see they're all short minute uh, four minute five minute videos um, the longest one here is 11 minutes um, but it goes through each of some of them go through one problem or two problems with them and they can skip through it watch it at their own pace these are just videos that I don't require them to watch their supplemental videos if I go back I do have some others in here that are longer that I've used in my flipped classroom quote-unquote for um, when we go to the library and they watch it as a class or when I assign it to them for homework the night before so let me see if I can find one of those because those are a little bit longer Oh, here's one factoring completely flipped classroom video so this one was 15 minutes that was a little bit longer um, but it's still only 15 minutes because I expect the students to pause during it to try the problems on their own and then hit play to watch it again and things like that so let me show you how I upload so over here is this little arrow with the line underneath it that's all you do click on that and it'll bring you to this screen you can either click and drag so if you have something open in a file you can click and drag like this and it'll start uploading or let me cancel out of that and go back or you can select files to upload so if you click here it will open up this browser and then you can search through your documents to find whatever video you want to upload um, so let me give you one of them so you can see what happens okay so it brings up this screen here is the title of your video um, it's always going to be the title that you save the video as in your folder or on your desktop or in your T drive you can obviously always change it um, and then you can add a description and then you can add a tag if you want so I always add a tag like which course it is just to make it easier for me or for my students you don't have to add a tag um, so I tag them as algebra 2 or algebra 1 things like that um, this one obviously isn't gonna work because it says this video is a duplicate I've already uploaded this but if you had noticed I don't know if it'll let me go back for a second or maybe I can put another one in here whenever you're done uploading you just click this publish over here um, and then it's uploaded so that's pretty much it um, and then you can go back and you can see all of your videos on the YouTube channel and like I said um, it's pretty easy it's pretty user-friendly if you have any questions let me know 
Um, I am using this year QR code readers um, on my worksheets, which I have a different video about. If you're interested in using those, um, you can watch that video as well. Hope this was helpful.